the last uh, week or so, I've been working on a, a new port to the BBC Micro. This is what I've called before an emulator, but really it's a, a source code port, but without the source code. So it's taking the arcade ROM, disassembling it, and patching it up so it runs on the beep. Um, and since we've just had some interrupt talks, I thought I'd show you the interrupt code that I've got in this game. Um, so this game naturally uses page two for its own data. So I didn't really want to actually have an interrupt handler at all. Uh, so this game has no interrupt handler and in fact runs the entire time with interrupts disabled. But just because you've got interrupts disabled doesn't mean that you can't still check for the things that would be causing interrupts. So the code that I've got here is um, not quite Star Effects 19 kind of code. Uh, well, I guess primarily because it's using timer one, but if you assume that that was the V-Sync, so that would be two to check whether the V-Sync's happened or not. We do a bit instruction on the interrupt flag register, the system via, uh, and if it hasn't happened yet, we go back and we do another bit, which checks, which basically does an and with this value, but throws away the result that keeps the flags that were set by the result. So it'll keep going around this loop until bit until this bit is set, which would be two, which would just be the value two if it was the vsync. Uh, and then we store that value back into the interrupt register. The most significant bit is zero. So that clears that flag. So the behavior you get from this is if you call this, if the interrupt hasn't happened yet, it will wait till it does happen. If you call it and the interrupts already happened since you called it last, it will go, it will fly straight through and carry on. Um, that may not always be the behavior that you want, um, but it's quite useful if you've got code that's running pretty close to 20 milliseconds, a 50th of a second, uh, and occasionally you get a frame that goes slightly over the 50th of a second, because what this will do is it will carry on straight away, and as long as your next few frames are less than the 50th of a second, you'll catch back up and nobody will notice that you went over, over your limit, and maybe you'll get a flicker on one frame, maybe you won't. So that's the that's kind of the simplest code. You don't need to set up any vectors or anything. I guess I should probably prefix this with saying that all of my games don't make any OS calls. They don't use uh, the OS at all, and they don't let the OS get into the interrupt handler, other than um, the bit that's hard coded in the ROM where it stores the accumulator in FC and calls your routine. So. Uh, Everything I do is completely illegal as far as you know, well-behaved programs are concerned, but is absolutely fine as far as the BBC is concerned and the master. Uh, so the reason that this uses time one is because what I want to do is not start drawing in VSync, which is a few, a few character rows off the bottom of the screen. What I want to do is start drawing at the very bottom of the screen, on the last scan line, if you like, so that... Um, I can have a maximum amount of time to draw things before the scan line, before the um, uh, electron beam hits the screen and starts causing flicker. As long as I can stay ahead of it, we get minimum um, latency on the controls and we get no flicker. So the rest of the code, uh, which the uh, I do have some, because I'm using timer one here, what I do is I set timer one to be a 50th of a second minus the two clocks that it's gonna to take to reload the values. Set the timer up to run in continuous mode, which means as long as I can make this first interrupt happen on the last scan line, I will get an interrupt on the last scan line every frame. And the amount of jitter in that will be the longest instruction. So basically six cycles, if you, if you use an instruction that's six cycles long somewhere in your code and you happen to be on that. Uh, so how do I make sure that I'm on the last line of the display when I first do this interrupt? Basically, I use the same calculations that uh, Kieran was talking about for working out how many scan lines and how far down the screen and then I also have some comments because BM and BVM and JSB and a master are all off by one or two cycles or maybe more. Um, 
not JSB, but that's pretty accurate, but a master is one cycle later than a BBC, than a Model B. Uh, BM and BBEM are both off by more cycles. In fact, the pre, the until very recently, BBEM was off by a whole scan line. Um, so what I do is I, I use a different variation of this code uh, to fight to get myself synced to the same point on a V-sync. So the problem with using timer one, uh, sorry, uh, one shot mode on timer two and setting it in V-sync is the V-sync interrupt will be delayed by maximum cycles in an instruction less one. So you could have up to five cycles of jitter there. Then you set the timer and then you could have another five in here. So you could end up with up to 10 cycles of jitter. Um, by setting this timer to go off exactly at the same time every frame, you reduce that to only the only finishing the instruction it's on when this interrupt happens, which hopefully will be this bit here where we're waiting for the loop. So it'll be the amount, the worst time it takes to get around that loop. We either hit it or we miss it by one, two, three or four. So we've only got five different cycles that we can be on when we get here. So it's very accurate, way more accurate than it needs to be for this particular game. Um, but we do a similar thing to get the initial position for uh, for the timer one interrupt. So I can make that as accurate as possible. Basically, this is that same loop where we we load the accumulator with the value for the vsync interrupt. We check to see if it's happened and if it hasn't happened, we go back here. The only difference I do here is I increment the X register in the middle as a, a counter of how um, of how many times I've been round that loop. I don't really care about the overall value about how many times I've been round the loop, but in this loop, um, because we're um, waiting for this flag to be set, it turns out that it'll it'll come up with a value. I can't remember what the value is. Let's say it's 27. It'll go around that loop. It'll come up with 27. It'll go around again. It'll come up with 27. It'll go around again. It'll come up with 26. Or it might come up with 26 on the first try or the second try. But there's only two possible values, two, two values that are one above the other value. So, and then this is just, this code is duplicated twice so that we start this loop in exactly the condition that we found vsync before. Um, so all this is doing is getting us within uh, one cycle of being exactly the same distance after vsync uh, as we were when we wrote the game. So that's why it's get exact vsync. Um, so this will make sure there's no jitter on when we set the first when we set these values to set up timer one. Uh, and then this initial period will be the period that we've calculated to get us down to exactly where we want to be on the screen. And you can either um, calculate this or just do some pluses and minus till you get to where you want to be. And what I usually do with these timers is I'll, I'll reset it several times down the screen. I'll set the low bytes to FE, so 256 minus two. Uh, and then incrementing the high byte moves you down exactly four scan lines. Um, so hopefully that fits in with what you've, you've got from Kieran's talk. I'm going to stop sharing this and I'll show you the game I've just been writing.
Um, yeah, so it sorts the asteroids into six buckets vertically. As soon as it gets to the bottom of the screen, it draws the player ship and then starts drawing the first bucket, the second bucket, the third bucket. So pretty much unless the asteroids are all crowded at the top of the screen, you don't get any flicker. Um, the game is a bit slow in the actual arcade one. So when you, if you get onto the second level and break the asteroids into lots of little pieces and don't shoot the little pieces, then you can go over a fifth of a second. But otherwise it's, um, it's pretty much okay, I think. Were you doing the anti-flicker routine multiple times per play? No, so it, it just waits till the very bottom of the screen and I've sorted the asteroids uh, by their vertical position on the screen. So it starts drawing the ones at the top of the screen as soon as the beam gets to the bottom and then hopes to have drawn all of them before the beam catches them up, which is always at the bottom of the screen. Okay, yeah. As I say, I accidentally did that. I ended up waiting for the sprites for every sprite and then wondered why everything went really slow. <laughs> <laughs> One frame for sprite. Well, what kind of display had the original game? It's a vector game. Vector game, ah. Yeah, I was going to do the vectors and the lines, but the amount of time it would take to even set up the lines would be more than the fifth of a second, so I had to redo it with sprites. So, a bit of a shame. Okay. Yeah, Neil Rain, of course, did the original. There's that Meteors. Yes. Yeah, yeah I really like Meteors, and I stole a couple of the sound effects. I'm sure he'd be honoured. <laughs> well, it's analogue audio, so, you know, good luck. <laughs> original and i think he did a similar thing of dodging around the electron gun in the same way by sorting them in vertical order because after all he showed me the routine to do it yeah it was a routine i wrote back in 82 83 but this is obviously a yeah. simplified version of it just to have six buckets right the screen's 192 so it's just uses the most significant bit shift them down a bit and store them in yeah six is nice 32 yeah, yeah because there's up to 27 asteroids, so it has to have room to put 32 entries in each bucket, or 27 entries in a bucket. So, yeah, having... Right. There's, there isn't quite a whole page free, so, but there's enough for six buckets of 27, so works out perfectly. So why don't you just sort them into just the order? Why do you have buckets? Well, I was going to... Well, you have... Basically, I do it in buckets because then you can do it in linear time. Otherwise, trying to sort 27 things is, is not cheap, even though it's only 27. No, no, fair enough. It's called pigeonhole sorting, or pig sorting for short. Is that right? <laughs> <Okay>. Fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, I did it back in the day in 32 buckets. But... Pigeonholes. That was Nick, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> it was, yes. Hi, John. Hi. <laughs> long time, I see. Very long time, yeah. Gil and I spent ages trying to reverse engineer your fire track scroll. We nearly did. <laughs> <laughs> Took ages trying to get it to work in the first place. <laughs> God, um, I don't know how long how long it took me. Way too long. We never spotted the bit at the bottom of the screen where you where you adjust the timing back again. Yeah, it, it kind of creates two screens, one after the other, a little screen and a big screen. Yeah. Um, uh, there are probably like 10 different ways of doing it, um, but that's the only way I could figure out at the time. It worked, so what can, you, what can you do? Well, you're pretty much on your own back in the day, weren't you? Yeah. Well, I've overrun now. <laughs> that's great to see you at one of these. Thank you.